This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So here's a feel-good story during, well, I don't know how, how good it will feel, but uh, at least there's a feel-good ending to it. Uh, there was a woman in Luzerne County who entered a Garrity's grocery store, made many statements about how she was contagious, and then proceeded to overtly cough and spit on $35,000 worth of merchandise. The store was eventually closed, the produce had to be thrown out, and the store had to be completely cleaned. So not just $35,000 worth of merchandise, but then the loss of business, the employees' time. Somebody had to pay those employees. Like, it's it's not like, you know, that woman was coughing up the money for, for paying the employees to close the store or something. And apparently it was all a twisted prank. So I thought today we would look at the charges because she has been caught and the state of Pennsylvania uh, has charged Margaret Ann Serco with uh, four felonies and a couple misdemeanors. And so I thought we should go over her arrest record here. She is apparently a colorful figure who has been uh, charged before. I don't know. I don't know how many of these she was arrested for. She was charged with retail theft back in 2014. That's what this number is here for. She was charged with theft by deception and receiving stolen property back in 2014. Maybe they were, yeah, it looks like they're, they're the same incident. So this is, this is all one incident here. And closed means that they were all taken care of. And then here's the new charge. There are one, two, three, four felonies and two misdemeanors. Threats causing the evacuation of a building threats causing serious public inconvenience. These kind of threats, which I'm not even sure if we can say on YouTube, but also things that cause evacuations like the FCC thing last year or the year before that. Uh, criminal mischief, including damage to property. And then apparently she did actually try to steal something on her way out of the store, so that doesn't help anybody. And then a disorderly conduct of a hazardous or physical nature. Quality individual, right? Let's see if there's anything else we can find here. She is currently being held in Luzerne County Prison, unable to post bail. As of uh, March 26th is when she was placed into uh, custody. She is a approximately 35, 36 year old individual. That is, that is scary that someone who is, you know, supposed to be a mature adult is deciding to go around and make a bad situation worse for everybody. Um, she has been advised of her rights to counsel, but has declined the public defender. I mean, I guess she can put in some paperwork later for that. Of course, she hasn't been provided the application for the public defender, nor has she been fingerprinted yet as of the uh, as of this document, which was yesterday, I think. She was arrested by Officer Eric Richardson, I'm assuming of either Luzerne County Police or whoever was, uh, whoever serves Hanover Township, Hanover Township Police. Yeah, there we go. So, and she will have her next court date on April 8th at 8.30 a.m., Something very interesting, if you go to some of the news articles, like the WNEP article that I that I posted a quick screenshot of, if you go there, the arraignment, so how does this work? You, you When you get a criminal charge, there's a initial arraignment or an initial hearing to determine if the charges will even go to trial. The judge just basically questions or, or the party or the the attorneys, the prosecuting attorney, questions the officer in front of the judge, and the and and, and the, any anybody else who's relevant, maybe some witnesses or something, and determines whether there is a basis. Basically, we would call this a prima facie case, a a basic case, to go forward in a criminal proceeding in a trial. So the judge actually, because of the social distancing rules and the shelter in place and all that and the closure of courts and everything, the judge was there in his judge's robe and doing a drive-through arraignment while she is in the back seat of the police car, uh, 
I guess handcuffed but with her hands in front so she could hold on to her arraignment papers and follow along. But she has she was arraigned in a drive through arraignment, which I have never seen that before. I've seen video arraignments. I've seen, um, you know, people brought to the courthouse in the full prison jumpsuit and leg irons and, and shackles and chains and everything um, when they are considered to be some kind of a threat. Um, I've also seen plenty of defendants who are released on bail who then come to court all dressed up in a suit and tie, hair done, makeup, you know, where, where necessary and everything to make sure that they look nice for their court appearance. And uh, what a difference being in the back of a police car, handcuffed and, uh, and, and not looking all that, that happy about her prank. So I think she's gotten what she deserved. Let's see what else we can garn from this from any of this story. According to the arrest papers, she said, I have the virus, now you are all going to get sick, before coughing on various food displays. The supermarket manager said, first thought, went to the thought that we're going to have to throw out all this food. It's so hard to get right now. I mean, produce hasn't been that bad, but the price of produce is going up quite a bit. And when it comes to all the different grocery items, it's so hard. Right now, it's the worst time in the world to be throwing food away, says the co-owner, Joe Fasula. Our crew came in around 4 a.m. this morning. They have all worked so hard. They've been here ever since. They're almost done now. Everything was totally cleaned, totally disinfected. Everything is very safe. The shelves have been restocked, and the manager or owner says that's thanks to the support from suppliers of the store. He's also received a lot of support from the community and around the world. This took on a life all its own, he says. We've been contacted by a newspaper in London. People have called from Germany asking if they can help. A lady asked if she could buy gift cards from us in Georgia. It's amazing. I spend most of my time walking around and yelling at them to go home just to get some time off, but as soon as this happened yesterday, the employees all jumped in. They did everything they could possibly do to get the product out, get the case emptied, get the case cleaned and sanitized, and she is now being held on $50,000 in bail. So how about we all stick together? and we get through this together and we treat each other like human beings who live in a community as opposed to everyone for themselves and that the healthy can take advantage of, of, of the unhealthy or, or weak. It just, that's absolutely disgusting in more ways than one now. Uh, think, people show their true colors in times of stress and so you can see how Margaret Serco reacts to the stress. She just wants to bring everybody down with her instead of trying to bring everybody up together. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Try to keep it civil. Remember, this is YouTube and we want to keep our channel, you know, in, in, in the good graces of Susan Wojcicki and, and YouTube leadership. Yes, um, Judge Amy Totenberg should hold her in contempt of the be kind to one another order from Georgia, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. No jurisdiction. No sovereign immunity. <laughs> no way. She's not a sovereign citizen that I know of. But I could I could hear it. I could hear her saying something like that. I am the one who contempts. <laughs> All right, that is our show, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. This is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education channel, and I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. This channel would not exist without your financial support, and I'm very grateful to those of you who are supporting us in the month of March. Thank you to the $50 plus supporters, Wes Delge, Aspernari, Video Remonetized, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Blackleaf, Joe Tyson, Benjamin Hightower, off. Steven, Ada, Cute Grills in Your Area, Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Mullen PC, and Anders Thornfelt. And thank you to all the $5 plus supporters. Everyone scrolling on that 
uh, LED panel behind me and you'll be in the description of the videos below. We're getting ready to switch over to April, so if you want to be on the April supporter lists, make sure that you get your pledge set up on patreon.com slash ljfrench or sponsors.com slash law before the 1st of April. My birthday is March 31st and I'll be doing a special March 31st live stream. I'm turning 40, so I figure I can't have my birthday party out. We're gonna have a birthday party here together. I, I don't even know that I can go out and get any decorations. So yeah, it'll just be a very plain 40th birthday party for me. Uh, a very merry unbirthday for me. So anyway, thank you very much for your support. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. I love you all. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, observe your social distancing practices, and I will see you in the videos that drop. I love you all. Bye. Covered in, in bush parts, by the way. No, hang on, where is it? Oh, it's in here. Oh, wow, you really got that stuck. It is all the way in here.